podcasting from sunny Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome to Tips for Tour Operators, your podcast for growth hacks, marketing tips, and actionable insights from leading experts in the tourism industry. Welcome everybody to the Tips for Tour Operators podcast. I'm Dustin Hoyman with Outdoor Adventure Marketing. And today I am so excited. We have tourism Tim Warren with us today. He is someone that I have bumped into just online. I see his name everywhere. I see his experience through different Facebook groups like Tour Operators United. And I just bumped into him. Uh, like his presence and experience has just been uh, out there for so long that it's something that I, I, I couldn't miss him. So I had to have him on the podcast. And um, today we're talking about something incredible. And that's basically, you know, planning for your future as a tour operator, or more importantly, planning for your tour, your future, and not as a tour operator. So to get started, Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Dustin. It's a pleasure to be here. And I wanted to express congratulations to you as a fellow podcaster. You're one of a small group of people in the globe uh, dedicated to helping the travel trade um, uh, grow and succeed. So on my kudos to you and and what a great job you guys have been doing so far. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, As you alluded to, you have a podcast yourself. You want to, you want to talk about that really quickly? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll mention more about it later. But yeah, no, I'm, uh, I have my podcast is called Travel Business Success. And uh, I just published show number 69. And, uh, wow. but it's, it's also dedicated to uh, helping uh, tourism businesses plan, start, grow, um, exit plan, and now sell their, their tourism business. And uh, it's full filled with lots of case studies. And I love to interview people who, um, who are success case studies, but also to show their journey, you know, the, 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 the hero's journey, because uh, you folks know that if this business is not always uh, uh, wonderful experiences. There are challenges along the way. So, you know, anything Dustin and I and, and so many others that have walked the path before you can, um, how we can share um, uh, examples and share, uh, help you avoid pain points, um, it's, we're honored to do that. Yeah, that's so great. And that's such a, a good leeway. So tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, you, you talked about you help businesses grow. So I think that's a great time to, to get into a little bit of your background. Well, I, I started like most of us and um, as uh, who has a passion for travel. I grew up in San Diego with my brother, um, and uh, which is close to Baja, Mexico. We love to surf. We love to travel. And uh, so we would go down to Baja and go surfing all the time. And my brother, who was working for this, thought he was going to work for the airlines. And so he started to build his hours flying us uh, uh, planes and down to Baja with buddies. And they'd share expenses. And they'd land at this cool little dirt strip out in the middle of nowhere in Baja, paddle out to perfect surf, set up a little safari camp, and just have a great time. And um, before I knew it, um, Kevin was getting calls from people he didn't even know that said, oh, man, Kevin, my buddy Dustin went surfing with you in Baja. Sounds awesome. How could I go? And my brother thought, hmm, can I get paid to do the two things I love most, flying and surfing? And so, yeah, back in uh, 1989, he uh, incorporated to Baja Air Ventures uh, doing just that, flying uh, surfers into remote places of Baja. And uh and that started to grow, and it was mostly professional men uh, and who wanted to get away from the crowds and, and have this great experience. But pretty soon in the early 90s, um, his clients said, gosh, Kevin, we love that you can get us into these totally remote, um, perfect places in Baja so quickly. Don't you have something for my non-surfing spouse or friend? So we thought, hmm. And at this, by this time, I'm helping Kevin in the background uh, with some of his marketing and some of just kind of logistics and kind of growing because his business is growing. Mm-hmm. And we thought, well, marketing is secret number one. Find out what your customers want and need or your market wants and needs and give it to them. And we thought, wow, we've already got the airplanes. We're incorporated in Mexico. Um, Baja is the perfect year-round playground. Let's, let's set up, let's do what, just what they want. So we found this incredible uh, place uh, on the Sea of Cortez in an area called the Midriff Island region of the Sea of Cortez and um, found this defunct American-Mexican partnership that had gone defunct. They had built these eight little casitas on this beautiful white sand cove. You could only get to by boat, nothing as far as you could see. And um, we, went, we went out there and spent the night and the next, it was just paradise. It was beyond what we had, oh, yeah. had envisioned. The next day, day we were signing a lease and that was uh, 20, 
20, oh boy, 23 years ago. Uh, we ran that place for 10 years and it subsequently uh, ended up buying property south of there and developing a whole new place called Las Animas Eco Lodge, which uh, I'm proud to say is the number one specialty eco lodge, especially lodging and trip advisor for uh, Northern Baja. And, uh, but anyway, what happened on this journey is I started in the early 90s, I started going to conferences in the outdoor and adventure space because, hey, we were new. I, I would just like you folks, we didn't know anything about international business or marketing or this, you know, how to run an, an eco lodge, but we were learning along the way. And so I was going to conferences and um, we had, you know, by now the business has got some momentum. We're doing pretty good. And I was meeting people at these conferences that were just like my brother who were wearing many, many hats that maybe some of you can relate to, the sales hat, the marketing hat, the product development hat, uh, the, the leadership hat, the, the, the dealing with all the minutia of, of doing what we do to start and run one of these businesses. And I thought, wow, could I be a, a business consultant exclusively to the global tourism industry, especially focusing on adventure travel and ecotourism and help some of these people like I've been helping my brother. And so, yeah, it's, that's how it, it all evolved is by being a tour operator, growing and, and learning and, and prospering. And then in 1994, I launched Adventure Business Consultants and have done nothing since uh, that. And it's taken me all over the world. I've literally, um, uh, helped uh, th now thousands of people with my podcast. I've done trainings for United States International Development, Mongolia, Dominican wow. Republic, and I've had clients all over the world. I'm truly blessed, and, um, but it continues to grow, and that's what we're here about to t today because a lot of these clients that, and I help specialize in helping businesses start and scale, and now a lot of these people have been around for 10, 15, 20 plus years, and then telling me, again, listen to what your market says, mm -hmm. um, Tim, we have now got this business that is doing six, maybe seven figures, and uh, we've put a lot of effort into this. How do we, how do we cash out on this? How do we, how do we make the biggest sale of our life and ma maximize it? What are the steps involved, and, and how can I do this? Because so, I have other things I want to do in life, or I, perhaps I want to leave the business to my kids or sell it to my, my employees. What are the steps? So that's how I got involved with the whole exit planning and brokerage and, um, uh, and starting last year. And it's just, it's just a natural evolution of this business. Yeah, that's really interesting. And it's something that I don't think a lot of people in, you know, just general business really think about. Um, so tell me a little bit, like, what is exit planning? Can you, can you dig into that a little bit deeper? Sure. Well, the, you know, the ex exit planning is, um, there's a, there's a famous, author um, that maybe many of you heard of about that's uh, on productivity and uh, performance and success, Stephen Covey. And um, one of the, the great quotes of Stephen Covey was begin with the end result in mind, which so many of us don't do because you're so busy being a one arm paper hanger, trying to mm -hmm. run all the ass, all the hats that you have to wear to, to, to mm -hmm. run, start run with these businesses sometimes um, that exit planning is really looking at it from a different perspective. It's actually, it's starting to look at it from a, if imagine you were going to buy, you were going to buy this business and what would be some of the things that you would be looking for? And I can tell you one, uh, one of the things is people don't want to buy a job. Um, they're looking for usually if you're selling a business for hundreds of thousands um, or millions of dollars, people want to see business that's, that's, that's generating cash. So uh, exit planning is looking at how can I maximize the cash flow of the business that's generating profits Two, we've got staff that are that have systems in place that are operating well uh, and they're happy. We've got great customers. We've got lots of repeat business. Think think of the franchise model. Think of McDonald's. Do, 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 do you, or do you ever go to one and not see the same exact thing everywhere you go? Because they have standards. They've systematized their business. Mm. And what happens is you make more money, you have more fun, and when you choose to sell, um, not only is your business more um, sellable one and we'll talk later about some of the things that would make your business unsellable my wires giving me fits here mm -hmm. um, the um, you'll 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 make a lot more money in fact you could make 50% or more on your exit um, by, by by being engaged with some of the things we're gonna talk about but also um, it, it makes your business sellable you're gonna make more money but you're gonna have a lot more fun al along the journey you know it's not just about running the business and then now I'm going to exit the plan. No, they're synonymous. And when you do it right, you, you, you do make more money and have more fun. And I'll give you guys some more examples and details. 
Sure. So that makes a whole lot of sense. You know, if you're you're planning for things, that's always going to result in a better result at the end of it. But why, or what's kind of the scenario that someone would would end up leaving their business, or or why is that important? You know, talk about, you know, what are the reasons someone would leave their business? Well, last one of my mentors, who he and his family worked on their exit plan for five plus years and uh, successfully sold their, their business for, uh, let's just say hundreds of millions of dollars wow. and um, re referred me to a guy named John Warlow who wrote a best-selling book uh, called Built to Sell. And I read this book and this was a year and a half ago and I was so taken with the, the power of, of this exit planning, what he had to say about um, building your business that I actually, long story short, I actually went and went through his whole um, uh, training online and then both live training and certification to become an, uh, a, a certified business value builder. And um, uh, when I was at these conferences and, uh, and hanging out with CPAs, attorneys, mergers and acquisition specialists, business brokers, people who really were involved with the, the business of selling their, of some people, build value and sell business and buy businesses. One of the things that I heard, unfortunately, too many times was, wow, I just, I just you know, I've got 12, uh, 12 businesses for sale. Unfortunately, four of them, uh, the, the spouse died. Um, and uh, now it's, it's the, 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 um, the other spouses or family is forced to, to deal with it. Um, and um, we're all going to exit someday, folks. So why not you do it? Why not do it on your terms? And so that you ha and so that you can make more money um, along the way. Um, and um, the other thing is, is that I know for so many of us in the in the tourism business, I've always felt that the the business that we're really in is the quality of life business. And we're just doing it from different ways, different aspects. But when we do our job well, we touch people's lives. We enhance, we create um, cultural connectivity. We, we make the world a better place. And um, there's some epic trips and tours and places that, that you guys do and that I've been to and you've experienced as well, Dustin. And, and a lot of this didn't, and, and it's about, um, for many of us, it's about leaving a legacy. It's about c keeping, helping that journey continue long after you, you um, not to sell the business, but we like to think a bit of transferring the business to the next person who's going to carry on all the hard work and the legacy you started. Yeah, that's really true. I mean, if you think about it in those terms, you're really wanting to make sure that people have that great experience. You know, tour operator, they start this, they start this tour to give that joy, that passion to somebody else. And so planning for that to continue beyond your time, I think is a, a great way to look at it. You know, when I think about exit planning, you touched on it. I, I often think about, you know, someone is going to sell their business later on. But you touched on something, you know, very, um, something that happens, you know, occasionally things happen that force you away from your own business, whether it's unforeseen sickness or life events. What would the difference be if someone had a plan versus not had a plan um, when you are effectively forced to leave your business? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good question. I, and I think, and I hate to be the professor of harsh reality here, folks, but um, it's, it's the, the difference is, is, is huge. The, um, is life happens and sometimes we are forced and, you know, that, and, or some incredible other opportunity uh, comes along. And I, I'd like to, you know, as I'm listening to this question, I'm keep th coming back to the word of planning, exit planning. Really, I, I think it's really an exit process. Um, and it's, it's about putting certain elements in place that integrate with the short term and help you, uh, uh, help you in, the, in the present, but set you up to give you the best options should you choose to exit um, the um, but as far as what what is the some of the downsides of, of not um, being involved, engaged with the exit process um, and the planning is not as a couple of things I mentioned before not being able, not actually there are some things like um, perhaps not having leases in place um, so so that that speaks to stability of the business an owner a future owner doesn't want to buy a business that's unstable and unpredictable uh, so leases. So um, if that, that you, and if there's certain things that you may not have in order that would actually prevent you from selling the business. 
So um, yes. that's a terrible thing is, is that you're not being able to sell a business and uh, you may, because you didn't have your act together, you may only get pennies on the dollar. And so your d years or decades of efforts uh, might be, be a fraction of what could be yielded. And if, if you happen to pass away, um, you, you're, you're leaving your, your family or, or um, your loved ones a fraction of what they could get. And, um, and, and I think last, but it, it, that, that's about, you know, what kind of legacy do you want to leave um, to your family? Do you want to leave them with, with um, options to continue the business and continue your legacy? Or do you, do you want to leave them with a, with a problem? That's true. Now, can you touch on, uh, you mentioned the leases. Are you talking about, is it like a physical um, building lease, vehicle leases? Can you dig into that a little bit more? Sure, sure. Um, you know, for most, so on, on many of us have got, um, uh, places of business that we operate our offices out of. It could be our home business, but also I know many of us in the, especially the outdoor tourism industry may have uh, exclusive uh, permits. Uh, permits can be very valuable and uh, that to operate on public lands. Uh, and they, they actually having a, uh, a permit in a key area is an asset and it is valuable. Um, and they do, there is a process to to um, pass that on to the to the new owner. Um, it, uh, so the lease is so it's going to be on a place of business. It's um, you want stability, you want uh, your permits to be in place, um, and um, or you may own your building. Um, and you want to is you know are you is the zoning okay? Are you in the zoning appropriate for you for the type of business that you're doing? Again, it's about building stability. Yeah, that's a really great point. And like you said, it also, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm hearing that it also just gives your family, if that's the case for your, so, you know, uh, untimely departure from life, it, it sounds like it gives your family options. You said that's the case. So um, just to be clear, like what are some of those options? Like is it is it they can continue them, themselves running the business, they continue to, I mean, sell the business versus just having to shut down? Is that what you're saying by options? Yeah, I mean that that is that is an option. Um, it's is the question is it, it, in that scenario whether you you divorce or you you die or this or that. The options are we want to all have fun in life. We want to, we want to make more money. We want to have more fun. We want to make a, a, a greater difference on the planet. And if you have a, a business that's generating lots of cash and it's run, it's running independent of you and that you don't have to be involved with the daily grind of daily ops and you're really working uh, on the business, not in the business. Um, uh, you have stability in, in your, your properties and your leases. Um, that's something that your, your heirs um, could take on and wow, well, I've got a business that's running itself and wow, it's generating cash month after month and I got awesome staff and I have diversity in my client base and wow, what a legacy my, my spouse or husband or business partner, there's the other one, um, mm -hmm. because many of us have business partnerships, um, uh, can appreciate it, and then they could keep it, they could sell it. Um, they, they, have, they have options as opposed to inheriting a mess. Um, yeah, sure. And so that's, that's the biggest thing. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. And, and when, you, when you do, when you continue, keep, think of the end result in mind, as you're, you're starting your business, as you're growing your business, be working towards a, a, the, what a good exit, a, a, bit, a valuable business would look like. And there are eight key drivers of a valuable business. And I'm going to give you guys at the end of the show um, a resource where you can actually see where do you stand in these eight key value drivers that John Warlow, the best-selling offer built to sell, has created um, and give you a benchmark. Um, so I'll share that at the end of the show. Oh, great. That, that'll be very useful. Now you talked about you know working on the business, not in the business, and I feel like that is one of the biggest things that people struggle with when they're as a business owner. Can you talk about you know what that means? I know everyone thinks about it and talks about it, but what does that really mean working on the business versus in the business? Well, <laughs> I, I've been so involved with um, as a consultant. Uh, I wear a lot of different hats. I don't just, um, I'm just not someone who hasn't been there and done that. I am still in doing it. I'm still involved in some of my projects are, um, are years. In fact, I still work with my brother in Bahar Ventures. We're 30 years. And, oh, wow. um, 
And, and there is still, there is customers that have problems. Oh, we have staff issues. We have, uh, we're, we're, we're operating in one of the most remote places on the planet. We have logistical problems. We own airplanes. We fly people down there. Oh my God, we got airplane problems. So that's the kind of stuff we're working in the business where it's, it's, it's reactive. It's, it's crisis. It's pressing. And, that kind of crap happens all the time, um, but when you when you have a business that, and and even when you have a business that's that you're working on, you're you're building the basis and you're planning to to sell it and you're you're making it more autonomous. Um, if you've got a team in place and you've got systems and procedures, l less of these things will happen. Uh, two, you won't have to be involved with the reaction of things, and you could be working more on working on the business. This might be um, how can we um, improve our cash flow? How can um, what sort of product is selling better than the others? Uh, we are right now engaged with pricing uh, for uh, the next year. We're analyzing occupancy rates. Um, we're 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 looking at numbers. We're trying to make not reactive decisions, but well thought out, well researched decisions that mm -hmm. can impact the entire company and impact the bottom line because we want to generate as much cash as possible for the quality of life, but also it makes our business more valuable. Yeah, that's a really good point. So you're talking about setting up systems and processes. You know, that's been a little recurring theme here. So I'm assuming those systems and processes, while you're setting them up for the end of the business, those have impacts probably fairly quickly. Would that be true? Abs abs absolutely. It's, it's a, it, you, hey, the bottom line, you're going to make more money. You're going to, you're going to have more fun uh, and you'll have less stress. How about that folks? I, 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 I don't think I've met anybody in this industry who doesn't resonate with, yeah, that's what I'd like. And make it, because I know most of us started as, you know, this was a dream. Like, oh my God, I could work in, in, you know, paddle sea kayaking the, uh, the British, British Columbia and, and watch, you know, um, the whales, or I could, you know, I could do walking tours of Italy, or I could ride horses in Mongolia and I could get paid for this. And, uh, you know, that's the dream and you can, um, and there's all these other hats you have to wear along the way. And, and when, when you get stuck in the minutia, when you get stuck in, um, let me rephrase that. When you have a business that's that's running well, you you're really building it to to truly to sell, whether you do or not. Uh, you'll have more. You'll have less stress. You'll have more time. You'll make more money. And guess what? Your staff will too. Guess what? Your customers will be happier too. Guess what? They're going to refer more people. <laughs> it's a big circle. I mean, it sounds it like, comes it's back like a, it's a win win win. Like you said, you are happier, less stress, more money. Your staff is happier, less stress, more money. Your customers have a better experience because the processes, you know, when they check in, it's probably going to be consistent every time and they can re confidently refer their friends. They know how to you know, put in reviews on TripAdvisor. So those start flowing in. It sounds like it just really helps everybody um, overall. So really, as much as we're talking about at the very end of your business, like you said, begin with the end result in mind, it starts to impact the day to day, um, you know, life of everything that's happening within your business. That sounds really amazing. It, it is. It, it's, it's, I, you know, I've been on both sides of the equation and, and I hope many of you have too, and that we're spending more time on the happy, less stressful side and, and, and having more fun. And, and imagine this, and this is really fun because, you know, I've watched so many businesses. I have helped so many businesses start growing. I've watched so many businesses start to grow to actually have clients who were doing the, wearing all the hats, having the long, long weeks to get to a point where, wow, we keep growing. Wow, we keep growing. Wow, we keep making money. Wow, I can actually take a vacation this year. I have, <laughs> I have clients now that, that this one from Alaska uh, who, uh, on the off season, she works about six or seven months of the year actively. And then she takes, two, they, she and her husband take two, um, two trips to Hawaii every year for you know, a week or 10 days. They take their grandkids now. You know, she might pull out her laptop, do a little work on the beach. And that's the, to me, that, that's the model. And actually, it's Doreen Toller is her name, and I've interviewed her twice on Travel Business Success because she has some really good antidotes, folks, and talks about it didn't always used to be that way. You know, mm -hmm. there was struggle, there was challenges. And, and, you know, some of the steps that got her, what were some of the things that helped, uh, helped her break through to generate more revenue? Because at the end of the day, if, if we're not generating quality leads, which is a great thing that you guys do, and you're converting those people, those strangers into friends and friends into customers, nobody gets to do anything. 
Um, so, so you got it all, you got to, you got to have a great trip. So you got to run customer service, great customer service, and you, you got to generate capital. You got to have bookings. Yeah, and yeah. Cash flow. Yeah. So I mean, you touched on it before. You know, a lot of people that I talk to in the industry, you know, they started to her because either they were really passionate. So um, Todd Kersey, who is the very first podcast we had. He, you know, started going on fishing trips. And then, like you said, with your brother, people said, hey, can you take me out? And then he did. And then you made money. And then all of a sudden now you quit your job and this is a full time gig and you're going and you're getting so busy that you hire somebody. And, and you know, you're in that day to day. You're doing a guide. You're answering all the phones. You've got another guy. Maybe you hire a third. And then you're thinking about um, you know, working with OTAs and DMC, uh, DMCs and DMOs and how that all works. There's a lot going on there. So how can someone in this big process of all these moving parts, how does someone get started in, in really planning for the exit? Well, the, um, some of the, the good examples that you just mentioned uh, uh, when you're working on your business and not in your business is that along the line of distribution channels and looking to increase revenue sources, diversity. Um, one, of, one of the eight key drivers, um, is um, there's actually four of them I, that I wanted to just share today. Um, let's we'll just start with that one. That, that has to do with, with um, diversity of clientele. Um, some businesses, unfortunately, may, um, they may have two or three really good clients that represents 50% of their business. And that's a really dangerous place uh, to be because if any one of those uh, major clients or you have, let's say you have a permit for, and, and all your business realizes there's one place, you got a problem. That, that, that is, um, uh, puts you in a uh, potentially dangerous position and not one that's, um, that is st stable for uh, the future of people who run, run your business, be it a family, a staff, or a, a vendor. But, so that's having diversity um, in your, let's just say your, your clientele is, is, is one of the key drivers. Um, and along the lines of what can they do right, what can they do starting today to, for the exit planning is, is one, keep really solid financials folks um it's really really important um, especially if someone's going to um, acquire your business they want to see books they want to see numbers because valuation of a tour business or hospitality business or lodge or whatever is a travel agency is based on multiples of revenue and um and uh and earnings and that that is the that is one of the key things so uh, having really really good books that are that are ideally not hey here's a whole huge box of of receipts that you give to your accountant at the end of the year uh no best to keep them every month and um ideally you have your books um audited uh, periodically because if someone's buying a business for hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions, I guarantee you they're going to want to see books that have uh, what's called a quality of earnings report. So keep really good books. Two, mm -hmm. um, do not expense everything, folks. Hey, we're, um, we're, we're independently employed. I get it. We want, you know, there's a balance between um, make, um, we don't want to pay as mo a lot more taxes than we have to. But at the same time, it's a, it's a two-edged sword. It's, think about it as a teeter-totter. Hey, if you expense out all these, these things that we can often do as a small business, then your profit, profit goes down. Um, but if if your business is based on a multiple of earnings, which could be anywhere from three times to eight times um, your earnings, and your earnings are really low, you're going to get the multiple will be really low. But if let's say your earnings get really high, so it's, let's just say you you were you expensed out everything and you made fifty thousand dollars. That was your average revenue per year, and you got four times earning. Your business might sell for two hundred grand. But let's say you made a hundred thousand because you you lowered your expenses and you increased your occupancy rate, your cash flow, and now you're getting four times earning. Your business is worth four hundred thousand. Hmm. Um, four times at four times earning. So you've doubled, you've doubled the, the what you're going to put in your bank. So um, uh, working on the balance between expenses and uh, generating profit and, and, and cash flow. Um, um, da, 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 da. Oh, I know. Um, and most of you probably know this too, that it's not just about how many butts you've got in seats or heads and beds, but um, uh, as far as overall quantity that, that makes you money, it's often about occupancy, especially in the tour, biz tour business. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how many, you've got a, a van that's going out or you've got a certain tour that's going out and you've, let's say your capacity is 10. And if you're consistently operating at three or four, chances are you're barely making it. 
um, because we're just covering expenses at that level. Your most profitable um, passengers are typically the last 25 to 40%. That's where you really make your money. So I would, if you want to look at um, increasing your earnings, increasing your cash flow and your profits, um, don't just look at volume, look at strategically at occupancy rate. Work on increasing your occupancy rate. Too many of us uh, add too many tours, add too many buses. Um, uh, oh, I got to have a brand new bus because no one's going to want to go with me if I don't. Um, it really is about occupancy rate, folks. I, I, I uh, and and it's, which is the same on sales conversion. You, you um, people coming into your website. How many of those people are converting uh, to actually becoming clients? So I would say, um, occupancy. Tr track your numbers. Figure out figure out what your occupancy rate is, and look at how can you increase that, which may include dumping some of your offerings. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the the occupancy rate. Look at the profitability of your offerings, and I'm willing to bet that some of you got some. Uh, some trips that are just not performing well, it'd be better to put all the effort uh, into those that do that you increase your occupancy. And the last item, number four, was um, I mentioned earlier about that, um, especially when you're dealing in the hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of business. And I know many of you, um, and I've consulted with many of clients that have this, that have multi-million dollar businesses. And when you're selling a multi-million dollar business of cash flow and you're doing multiples of their earnings, you're looking at a business that's going to sell for millions of dollars. Nobody wants to buy a job, folks. <laughs> um, at that at that level, even in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and um, so it's re, it's and it's really important. And I can I can promise you, it's less stressful if you are working on getting um, uh, a strong person in place to run your daily ops, someone who can be you, who can run the, the business on the daily ops on the day-to-day -day basis. I, I have a client right now, we have actually four locations and each of those locations has got a, a core manager that is, and we're working on this company-wide system about how do we do what we do. But keeping the end result in mind and knowing that everything changes, our posture is not only do we have a non strong number one in every uh, office location, but we have a strong number two. We always have someone in training mm -hmm. to, who's fully prepared to take over for number one if any one of those jump up, drop out. And that's some of the exit planning. I've been working with this client now for three years plus, and we knew from the beginning when he, when he hired us that that was our end game. And we had some work to do. Um, but the, hey, the cool thing is, is that we've increased revenues ugh, 45 percent wow. um, and we're now we're gonna think we're gonna do 2.5 million in sales this year um, the um, the diversity of our clientele um, our client we have tons more clients that are singing the gospel of this particular operator and um, we've worked really hard on um, our social media reviews and our kind of our presence out in the world and so there's a lot more assets both tangible and intangible that I feel excited about that when we take this to market um, the new owner is going to go wow you got it really you know all the all the all the the check boxes have been checked um, and that just makes the business and, and they've made a lot more money along the way and they've actually gotten a chance to um, move back to their home country which was part of their dream and the business is still generating tons of cash oh that's really great so when somebody's like thinking about exit planning, you basically broke it down into four steps. So the first one is keep good books. Do you have, um, do you have any sort of tips on, on, on basically keeping the books? Is it using a piece of software? Is it using some sort of a system? Do you have like a quick little thing about, you know, how can someone make sure that they're keeping good books? Well, I, I, I'll be straight with you guys, folks. We all have our gray areas that the things we don't like to do, don't want to do, don't have time to do or all the above. Can any of you relate? <laughs> For me, it's, it's accounting. Um, and so, I, hey, best job, hire a really good accountant to <laughs> do it. Um, but be consistent. Um, we do use, um, in our businesses, my wife and I, she's also an executive coach um, and actually has, specializes in soft skills. And she's, I brought her in on many projects where we have team issues and communication issues or that kind of stuff. Um, uh, we use, we use um, quick, uh, QuickBooks. Wait, which ones? Yeah, QuickBooks. 
uh, online, and it's it's um, it's linked into our CPA and our our bookkeeper. They all have access to that, and so that I think that really works well. Um, And they also help keep us accountable, and we give us a courtesy reminder: say, "Hey, Tim, we need this credit card statement so that we can make sure we can enter it and properly categorize it." So that that would be that would be one piece of software. (laughs) So um, sounds good. Also, you, so you mentioned getting a good accountant, which um, we've actually worked with, not worked with, but on the podcast, we've had uh, Ingrid Ezrum from Polymath, and she is a, a bookkeeper that works specifically for tours and activities. So if anybody's looking for that, I feel like I plug her more than anybody else because nobody likes accounting and that's somebody that's just like, get somebody who's a professional. She loves it. She's good. So I just wanted to talk about her. So it's uh, Ingrid Ezrum at Polymath. So first is keep books. Second is basically keep costs low. Don't expect expense everything, um, which I think that is a very good tip. You know, that's something that probably a lot of people don't think about is when you're thinking about your own earnings as an owner, that comes into play as, as exit planning. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's, it's um, again, it's finding a balance between, you got to make sure you have enough um, uh, money that you're putting in your pocket. You've got to pay yourself and your team at the end of the day. But, I think, think in terms of multiple things. It's really about leverage. Think about multiples of earnings. And the more earnings you can generate and the higher your multiple and um, the more money you're going to put in your pocket or um, uh, someday if you, if you sell. Um, and so it's, 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 you've got to find that balance. And, and really the most profitable companies and, and, um, uh, are going to do the best. But also there's one other thing about um, multiples of earnings. It's not just how much you you made in any year but it's also what's the trend if you can show a consistent trend of wow we're growing at seven percent ten percent fifteen percent year over year over year that's what the new person who is going to um, take over the business is looking for they want stability they want they want growth especially if you're in a competitive market and i know so many of you are and i've played in those markets too uh if you can show consistent growth um they, that's another way they value businesses is, is what's the growth rate uh, on, and the, the earnings and they can actually forecast out 10 years and say well based on this growth rate and these revenues we think that this business business is going to generate x amount of dollars per year wow and based on that i'm willing to invest you know, a portion of that today to earn this in the future. So um, it's, it's, it's finding that balance. So, you know, think, think short term, put money in your pocket, but don't, don't expense every, if you, if you don't make any money, your business is not going to um, be nearly as att- you will, attractive to an acquirer. E- even if your growth rate is, is going, it's, you have to have growth rate and earnings. That makes sense. That makes sense. Everyone talks about, you know, revenue, but that the idea of profit is very, very important in there. Um, so the third step, so first is keep your books. Second is um, keep cost lows. Don't expense everything, you know, increase your earnings. Uh, so the third one is, I'm going to say track your numbers. And I think one of the, uh, the big one in there is your occupancy rate, especially if you have multiple tours. I have heard and have seen and suspected in a lot of businesses, and you've probably seen the same thing. People will offer three or four, maybe five different tours. And a lot of times it's one that is really paying for the operation of the others. Can you talk, is that basically what you're talking about is, is watch the occupancy rate, making sure that each tour you make is generating actual profit? Yeah, and, and, I, and we all start somewhere. You know, most of us don't open the door one day and just go, I've got this great tour, and oh, look at all these people come rushing in. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? No. <laughs> they call that the field of dreams uh, business and marketing <laughs> plan, right? And uh, if I build it, it will, they will come. But uh, yeah, it is looking at your numbers and um, more tours, more offering folks is not necessarily better. Um, I think one of the ways, not only can you look at your numbers and see what's doing well, but you should be, um, you should be serving your clientele and, and uh, cause a great, a great business model is when someone comes with you, has a good time, uh, knows that you run quality trips and doesn't die, chances are they want to come back because they now trust you. And they're going to say, Dustin, I love that trip we did um, last year. Now I want to come back with bring my alumni group. What else you got for me? So trip product development is a, is a key thing. So, mm-hmm. but I would ask your, your, your marketing. And again, going back to 
marketing is easy. Find out what your clients want and need and give it to them. So how do you find out? You ask them. And, and one of the best ways to do it is right, right, right at, at, at the end of the trip. Right, right when, they're, when they're, they're excited, they're fresh, they know the trip well, ask them what did they like, what could be better, um, how do they rate you? I use a simple one through five scale because we want to know, uh, are, are we rocking it before they leave or are they pissed off before they leave? So we can, either way, we know which way we want to uh, handle them so that the, uh, they, don't, they positively influence the market moving forward, not negatively. And, and, and fourth, ask them what, what, other pla- what other places would they like to go? What other experiences would they like to do? What's, what's on their bucket list? Ask them. You can run uh, surveys to your clientele list. You should do this every couple of years. No, every, twice a year, excuse me. Um, and f- ask them uh, what they want. You can give, you, even when you're thinking about some trips or destinations that you're thinking about developing or a new experience, put that out there, let them vote, see what it does. Or, and I'll put a, keep an keep a open-ended um, survey, like an essay question, hmm. where people can say, yeah, you know, I've always dreamed about going to this or having this experience, or I'd like to share this with my family, or you, you just never know. So, you know, you won't, you can't find out what your market needs unless you ask them. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And, and like you said earlier with the occupancy rate, if you have, let's say a 12 person van, you're paying the same amount of gas, whether you have four people or 12 people in there and you're paying the driver the same thing where you have four, four people mm-hmm. or 12 people. And so if you can fill that one van, you just make that much more money at the end of the time. Your expenses stay the same, you make more money. You know, paying attention to those occupancy rates is definitely very important. I, I just have a quick uh, antidote on just that exact point because this just came up. We have a, a, a one of our uh, businesses that are for sale right now as a tour operator in Alaska. And uh, we have a very qualified, very interested candidate uh, who has done her due diligence and looked at, at everything that's involved with this business, likes the numbers. And now we're at a higher level. She's come up and, and met the owners. She's done some tours. And one of the things that was really attractive to her is that they they do day tours and it's they have these beautiful 14 passenger Mercedes Sprinter vans and um, they've been typically running it's typical small mom and pop uh, business started from nothing. And now I've got a business that's generating hundreds of thousands of years. It's growing at they They've had their best year ever. Uh, I started working with them last year. Um, things, everything's good. But one of the things that, when talking with this woman and then part of what we offer is because I specialize in tourism and I work with a very experienced uh, small uh, to medium sized business broker was educating her on what, what was the, the, the market trends in Alaska in tourism in the U S and in talking with her, she, she said she realized, and this is one of the selling points of this business is because they've been working in the business and not on the business and that have not had a chance to develop their marketing as much as they'd wanted to. They've been running at a relatively low occupancy rate, even at about a 40% occupancy rate. They're still making um, their margins about 50%. They're still making a whole bunch of money every year. Wow. And so she could recognize by, wow, we got two vans running at, at 50% occupancy. Wow. I could double my revenue and not have to capitalize by going out and buying another fifty thousand dollar van, and so and 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 so we had this exchange, and I said, and yeah, and and I really see, and she comes from kind of a marketing background, and so she could really, she's, I could see the numbers clicking in her head, and we had that, and she, I could just hear her excitement go up about, wow, what did that mean? Because I could, I could double my revenue in a short, relatively short effort, because the brand is good and everything, the product's good, pricing is good. All I have to do is increase my occupancy rate and I could, I could put another $150,000 in my pocket. And I think they could do it in a couple of years. Easy. Wow. That's really amazing. I mean, that's just the power of this sort of, you know, tracking your numbers and paying attention and, and you know, having the plans in place to do that. And I think she's going to buy the business. Be, and that's one of the key things because of that. That's because it, yeah. it's got that, that predictability and it's got the cash flow trend, but they, she could see how she, I think it's growing 13%. Doreen, who I mentioned earlier, I've seen her grow at 30, 40, 50, 60% a year. Wow. And, uh, and just, and, you know, now, and, and uh, again, it, it's, it's, it's it, you, by practicing the proper principles of operating a business that generates money. Now, 
puts you in a position later on to just to do to exit and have um, have more options on your exit. Whether you give it to your family, sell it to your employees, um, uh, or you um, sell out and you go start another part of chapter of your life, but you got a bunch of money in your hand. <laughs> good... Yeah, I think nobody's going to say no to that. So, so we have like keep books, you know, making sure you're keeping your um, expenses low and you know uh, earnings high. Pay attention to your numbers, occupancy rate, and the last one is one of my favorite. And I actually wrote when you were talking about it, basically get out of your own way. Make sure you as a tour operator are not, uh, or making sure you as a tour operator are replaceable. Or you, you need to be able to get out of your business. And you, like you said, hire a number two and find somebody that if you need to step away, you should, be, you should be able to take a vacation because if you're not irreplaceable, if that goes away, then somebody needs to fill it and nobody wants to buy a job. I mean, you want to take a job to make money, not to, to spend money. <laughs> to work. Yeah, no, that, 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 that is it. And, you know, and I realize that that might be one of the more challenging aspects, but it, I can tell you folks, it's doable. Uh, people, I think if you support and train your, your team, and it's one of the things that I've been doing with that client for the last three years, it's really a, actually develop the, the team, not only the managers, but even the, the each individual people so that we're, uh, implementing the same standards of how we operate and how we treat our customers and how we get s social media reviews um, throughout the company. And actually, you know, using best practices from one depot might be doing what they did here. We're carrying over here. So, but moving the owner out of the daily ops. And so you just have to look at, at your business and look at how can you make baby steps in that direction? It doesn't happen overnight, folks. Developing uh, your, your, your human resource assets uh, is one of the best things you can do, but it's also can be one of the most challenging things you can do. And, and that's why, you know, that's, it's, it's, I know this business so well inside and out, up and down. I've, I've been there. I've done that. I know, I know the pain and I know the glory around, <laughs> around people. And um, they're unpredictable. What can I say? We, we, we love human beings and they can be a pain in the ass sometimes. So what can, what can you say? <laughs> so yeah. You just try to find the best in every person. And, and, and also for the owner, the thing you can do is, is a put down your best practices, write it down, create your systems, and then, and then work on training your staff to implement small systems one at a time and then keep chumming, checking back because sometimes um, they forget, they start doing something and then they stop doing because you, it wasn't um, a stable system yet. Yeah, that's really great info. You know, actually write things down. So that way, you know, if you're the tour operator that answers every single phone call, if you write down how you answer the calls, you know, somebody else can go through that as well. It's really helpful. And then train for it and train for it. And then, and then expect what you inspect, what you expect. Inspect what you expect. I really like that. I really like that. Yeah. It, Cause people somehow de-evolve. They go, they do it for a while. Then, and you're going, Oh, cool. And I, and then they can stop doing it. It's just like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. This has been very helpful. So if somebody wants to dig in a little bit more and maybe reach out to you to, for your services, or they just got some questions, what's the best way for someone to contact you? Well, a couple of things. I'm, thank you, Dustin. I mentioned earlier is the, um, John Warlow's eight key values, uh, eight key drivers of a valuable tour business. Um, if you go to travelbusinesssuccess.com and over on the right side uh, of the, the side, the, the, um, the, the web page, uh, you'll see a thing in there for to, um, actually, I take that back. At the navigation links there's a there's a bunch of stuff on travel business success but on the navigation links on the top i had to write this down to remember where it was under resources on the right side click there you'll see a thing that's this free business value builder survey click on that it will take you to this uh survey it only takes about 15 minutes to do folks it's totally confidential and you will uh, when it's done you will absolutely get um a a, a rating of where where you score uh, overall and also in the eight key uh value drivers of a business and um if you qualify i will actually follow up with you and we can then we'll dig in a little bit and look at what are some of the specific areas that if you what's what i call your low-hanging fruit what if we worked mm -hmm. in this area in this area is would have the biggest bang for the buck and 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 to move you towards not only short-term revenues and ha happier having a happier business but making it more valuable too so 
So travel business success, podcast, videos, trainings, articles. Uh, there's a ton of stuff there, folks. Also, adventure biz, B-I-Z, success.com. Um, is my second, actually my founding website and, and what I'm really most well known for and what I've been doing is, is really active tourism, experiential tourism, ecotourism, adventure travel. Um, those are the, that's where my heart is. That's where I have the deepest level of experience. Um, and my, my phone numbers are, and, and so that's, that's for value building. Um, but really if you're looking at, if you're looking, if you wanted to start a business, uh, there's, there's information there. I can talk with you about that. But if you're in a, in that, that mode that most of us are in and that's I'm, I'm interested in growing my business i'm interested i need to i can't think about selling my business tim i gotta make some money now <laughs> um, or, I want, or business you've done well and now you're looking to scale you want to you want to scale to that point where you really can't afford to have all the team in place um you'll see information under services about that but i love would love to talk with you and uh my, my me and my team um we're dedicated to helping people realize their dreams in the tourism business yeah, that's great. So travelbusinesssuccess.com and uh -huh. adventurebiz, B-I-Z. Biz, B-I-Z. Okay, so I'll link both of those in the show notes. So if anybody is interested in, in um, you know, talking with Tim or taking that assessment, I think that would be a great first step is to go and just um, see, you know, where your weak spots are, find the low hanging fruit. Um, so click those links below. And then, you know, Tourism Tim, he is a legend in the industry. You need to talk to him. <laughs> He's a guy you need to go to. Is there anything else uh, you want to say before we, uh, we leave for the day? Um, thank you. And um, hey, folks, we're, we've all we all started small. We're all we're, we all have challenges. I, we we all we're we're all in this together. So um, we have to work together. And I think that yeah, I may have been around the block a couple times, but I'm I can assure you, I'm a constant. I may be a teacher, but I'm a constant student because um, technology is changing all the time. Social media is staying all the time. So you have to also hang out with young rock stars like Dustin and many <laughs> others to learn uh, what's happening in technology uh, and how we. Can can fuse um, the wisdom of experience in the, in the business and operation with marketing and conversion and online stuff and to really make it all work. But if you do it right, um, it's an awesome experience. It's an awesome world. And um, I've certainly had fun and I've, I've got a, I've been blessed to work with somebody that also um, their dreams are really coming true and, and to help them exit and to put lots of money in their bank account. That's really fun too. Yeah, I bet that's uh, very rewarding seeing people actually right off into the sunset or wherever they're headed uh, with a little bit of extra cash so they don't have to worry about their family or lifestyle. That's the power of what's going on here. Tim, cool. thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Cheers. Bye. Thanks a lot. Take care. 